Hello, and welcome to the Hospitalé. We're up here on the Massif de la Clap, a mountainous plateau 150 meters above sea level. Now here we are in the restaurant of our estate. This is the vineyard inn we call the Grange des Misèles. Now it's called that because it's been here ever since 1561. And during the Middle Ages, the sheep were brought in here to have their lambs, and sheep were called misel in Old French. And you can see here, we've tried to keep the restaurant in its original form, so that it corresponds perfectly to the vineyard cuisine that Dave Moreno has created for us. The concept of vineyard cuisine is very Mediterranean in its philosophy. And of course, when you consider this estate, which is perfectly oriented with the Mediterranean Sea on the one hand, and on our side, this wonderful soil, the Corbière and especially the Clap Plateau, you can see we're perfectly situated between the sea and the mountain, giving us excellent vineyard conditions. Our way of looking at cooking in the vineyard cuisine approach is that of a simplified, basic and very Mediterranean cuisine. And now I'd like to show you a recipe for prawns with cinnamon apples prepared in olive oil. This is a recipe that requires ingredients in what I'd call their primitive state. This cuisine almost has a paleolithic aspect to it because we work with apple that's shredded at just the last minute, the prawn in its original state, and nothing but a little cinnamon to balance out the acidity of the Granny Smith, which in turn gives balance to the sweet taste of the prawn. Now, while I'm cutting up the prawn, my friend Christophe here will cut up the Granny Smith. Now, you have to get it dead center. This part of the job looks a little bit barbaric. But this allows us to get two lovely pieces. We're just going to brown the prawn, just a drop of olive oil, and we'll work on a prawn which is evenly cooked. And while the oil is heating, you see that Christophe has just peeled the apple, and he shreds it immediately so it doesn't oxidize, so we don't use any lemon at the beginning. And as soon as it's shredded, Christophe will season it with some ground cinnamon. Usually, this recipe is cooked on what we call a plancha, but we found that using a bit of fat and a frying pan that's very hot, we get the same effect as using the plancha. So meanwhile, I'll check the seasoning of the apples. And as I was saying earlier, the apples have to be quite heavy on the cinnamon. There now my prawns are starting to cook pretty hot. There we are. And now we're going to arrange the plate. So we'll give it an architectural look, since there's a sort of symmetry to the prawns, somewhat circular. And don't be afraid to give it a bit of height, a pure cinnamon stick, there. Now we'll just add a drop of olive oil, with some chives, like this. And there you have apple cinnamon prawns. Now here's a recipe for scrambled eggs with truffles and telline. Now telline, telline is the local name for a shellfish. Shellfish which are like the baby mussels that you see kids playing with in the summer at the beach. Christophe will get the scrambled eggs going, so he'll just break the eggs and stir them up while I start cooking the shellfish. I cook these little mussels in boiling salt water, sea water if it's available, or just salted water. And once the water starts to boil, I dump in the telline, and I know they're cooked, 
as soon as the shells start opening up, at which point we'll remove them with a skimmer. Now I put on the saucepan to heat, with a little knob of butter for the eggs. And meanwhile, we've minced the truffles. And so now you see, the cooking is finished. And the shellfish have opened up nicely. So I take the mussels out of their shells. We don't cook these for very long. And that will allow us to keep their, well, to keep their iodine inside. It's what we call intracellular cooking, which just means that we get all the natural juice that was inside the shell because they haven't cooked for very long. All right, now we have the omelet, which is starting to thicken. It consists of nothing but eggs, truffles, salt and pepper, quite simply. And now I'll add the mussels, which will finish cooking with the egg mixture. And to make it a little lighter, and smoother, Christophe is beating the egg whites and I'm going to add them to the recipe. And while Christophe is getting ready, we'll take out a soup dish. The egg whites make this meal much lighter. And don't hesitate to add a bit of pepper, because truffles go very well with pepper. The final touch, in keeping with a cooking style that is very simple, very rustic, we just add a bay leaf and a touch of rosemary. And here you have our truffle omelette with mussels. Here's our free-range chicken breast that we'll serve with what we call an old bachelor's mashed potato. We call it old bachelor's mashed potato because it reminds us of the old bachelor cooking a potato by the hearth, an old potato preferably, that he'd mash with a bit of butter. For this recipe, I'll need some really good quality chicken breast, naturally, a few mushrooms, some shallots, potatoes, milk and butter, and some salt and pepper. To get things underway, we begin by frying the chicken breast. While that's browning in a bit of butter and peanut oil, Christophe will begin by dicing the shallots and the mushrooms. And then he'll sweat them lightly in a knob of butter and moisten them with water. The main thing at this stage is to keep things simple. So Christophe has got the mushrooms and shallots going in a knob of butter, and I'll just wet them. Don't be afraid to add a good bit of water, because what we're looking for here is just the mushroom flavor. So we're trying to get as much flavor out of the mushroom as possible by boiling it down for quite a while. So I've just taken the chicken breast out of the oven, where I finished cooking it after a quick crisp browning in the frying pan. Christophe has put his mushroom stock through a strainer, and he's now got a little liquid sauce. And meanwhile, I'll slice up the chicken breast, and Christophe will add a little butter to the mushroom sauce to give it a bit of consistency, without altering the flavor too much. And now we put the potato in a circle mold, and mash it with a fork like the old bachelors, and then a knob of butter. After which, we'll dress our plate. My chicken breast. I'll spread it out rather like a fan, in a kind of circular shape. Like 
and in the mashed potato, don't be afraid to put in a very good butter and lots of it. One has to be generous with the butter and a pinch of nutmeg. If you like nutmeg, it wouldn't be a bad thing in this recipe, since we're in a sort of wild mushroom mode and nutmeg is a bit exotic. There, thank you for yourself. And here you have your free-range chicken breast with an old bachelor's mashed potato. The recipe I'm going to show you now is a pear with wine, vanilla ice cream and black pepper. And for that, we need three nice pears, some sugar, cinnamon, cloves, and today we'll use a 1995 Chateau de l'Hospitalet to poach the pears. While Christophe is peeling the pears, We'll mix the 95 Hospitali wine with some water and sugar to make a syrup, using equal parts of water and wine. And then we add the cinnamon sticks, the cloves, and then the sugar, equaling about 30% of the volume of the liquids. Here are my two pairs. And the saucepan is now simmering, so now I'll poach the pears. There. The pears are poached, and they've steeped in the syrup. In fact, they've cooled in the syrup after poaching for about 12 minutes. So now I'll slice the pears. Je vais demander and now I'll ask someone to bring me some vanilla ice cream, which we can work with at the correct temperature. Thank you, Julien. I'm just taking one spoonful, nicely shaped, and now we'll just add the cinnamon as a decoration and the syrup. and a little ground pepper. Go ahead, Christophe. Put the pepper on the ice cream. And there. There you have a cinnamon pear with ice cream and black pepper.